All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am here again, Alhamdulillah, with Dr. Umar. Uh, and uh, so, as you know, we were discussing uh, this question of why the secret societies use these symbols anyway. And, uh, you know, and Dr. Umar went into uh, the reasons that they want to mark their territory. And uh, anyway, so I started thinking and I wanted to show Dr. Umar and all of you a verse and then Dr. Umar can comment upon the different meanings of that particular word that we're going to look at. Because I think uh, it actually, it, it surprisingly has many meanings that cover a lot of different aspects of this topic. And that's why I was like so surprised. And so, um, Dr. Umar, I'm going to share the screen with you and with the viewers. And uh, and then we'll just uh, take it from there. Okay. And uh, so here's the verse uh, in which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ لَأَتَّخِذَنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِكَ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا That I will definitely take, Allah says, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Shaytan says, Astaghfirullah. وَقَالَ لَأَتَّخِذَنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِكَ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا that shaitan says, I will definitely take from your servants nasiban, which means portion, means mark, means to set your gaze and eyes on. It means to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It has all of these meanings that relate to, you know, the sacrifices that they do, the, the, this eye that's all over the media nowadays, you know, I'll put my eyes upon them. Uh, nasib also means to put a mark upon them or a sign upon them, as you'll as we'll see in the dictionary. Mafruda to appoint it. So um, here's the Arabic English dictionary that I wanted to actually touch upon. And uh, so as you can see, the word nasaba here uh, it has. Um, many meanings but nasaba if you look at where it says a sign a mark set up to show the way mm -hmm. and any of these if they ring something you want to say dr umar you're more than welcome to you know uh, a sign or mark to set up to show the way or mm -hmm. a stand a standard setup um and um it has other meanings uh, again signs marks stones uh to set up the, uh, to show the way yeah. uh are, are they also showing each other like we're connected or are they also like directing yeah, one these, another these are signs they're, they're signs not only uh to mark a territory uh for the humans but also for the jinn uh, ah. so um and as as i told you before there are uh, there are um, ways of the kingdom, and then uh, Shaitan Iblis has his ways to distort uh, the ways of the kingdom. Now, for example, when uh, the the traditions about uh, Ibrahim in the Israeli uh, I Israelite narrative uh, tell of him uh, wandering uh, through. Uh, the Levant through Syria and uh, all that area um, as he walked uh, through the desert as a Bedouin because that's what he was right. um, uh, he would set up certain signposts and all of the prophets throughout the Old Testament uh, are known to set up signposts okay hmm. they would be a collection of das of rocks or whatever and wherever you go in the world you can see uh, these certain things men have a way of doing that it is a way of showing others that so and so was here or this is the way forward uh, this is the way to safety or this is the way to uh, uh, a memorial hmm. or this is holy ground okay uh, every every uh, 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 sign had a different meaning. Okay, now right. when um, uh, Iblis does this, the people of Iblis do this. Uh, they're also setting up signs for their people, hmm. so that they know the way. This is why, um, for example, the Freemasons, a Freemason from uh, Bombay, 
could uh, travel to some place in China and meet a Freemason from uh, London, and uh, they could recognize each other by means of a different sign, mm. and then they could confirm this by means of a certain ritual, a uh, verbal exchange. Okay. 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 So um, this is what's taking place. Excuse me a minute, darling. Darling, my, my, Molly, would you remove this little boy? <laughs> <laughs> my grandson here. This and is I fine, Alhamdulillah. He's, distra he's distracting, okay? So, uh, in any case, uh, that's a different sign, you see. Right. <laughs> uh, so, all, all of these things are ways to mark the way. And they... Please don't argue, just go, just go, go, okay? Um, so these are signs in which people uh, of uh, either camp will know the way. Mm. Now, the problem here is that you, the, the verse says a portion marked off. Well, my God, that's pretty serious. Who yeah. did the marking, you see? And we know that nothing is marked off unless Allah gives permission sure. uh, with respect to his servants. Sure, absolutely. So, now, this brings us back to the story of Genesis, which, which um, speaks about uh, darkness uh, uh, covered the surface of the deep. Okay. Well, what is the deep? This is the deep knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's darkness covering it. Hmm. Okay. And so uh, Allah took a look at this and he said, well, we can't have this then anymore. And he said, so let there be light. Well, the translation says, let there be light, but that's not what it actually uh, is written. It, mm. The translation should, should read, become light. Mm. You see? Yeah. As he's uh, 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 hovering over the surface of the waters. Right. What are the waters? The waters are the nations and the peoples that he has created, jinn and human. So he said, become light. And there was light. Right. Now, this is not referring to the sun. This is referring to truth and those who would receive it. So those who received the light, those who became light, they became the servants of Allah. Okay. Now, right. you can reject that light. You can turn it off. <laughs> right. And yeah. by doing that, <coughs> this this enables shaitan to brand you. Boom. That's what's taking place here. The sigil is a branding. So people who receive that mark, this is the mark of the beast. There are many, many kinds of mm. marks of the beast. Okay. This is one of them. The cross is one of them. The pentagram is another, okay? It's not just all uh, one mark. You can say, oh, the, the, the eye uh, uh, of the, um, uh, the, the Illuminati eye, that's one symbol, that's one mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may be the mm, mark supremo uh, of the day, but it's not the only one, okay? There are many marks. And I think if you go through this, uh, uh, this uh, scripture here, if you go through the Quran and you see this word, this term, what, what did you say? Nab, uh, Nabas, Nabas or, yeah, Nasab. Yeah, Nasab. Nasab. Yes. If you go through and you look at every reading of Nasab, you'll come to, you'll be able to come to an understanding of uh, its total overall comprehensive uh, meaning. Okay. Now, it can mean many things, obviously, but it is certainly a mark. Mm. And this sigil is a mark. And the sigil is, uh, is a, a stamp of uh, completion. In other words, the bargain is completed. Mm. Okay, it's a stamp. You've, you've been marked. You're, you're, you're ready for slaughter. Okay. Uh, one of the other meanings is like, one who is set or set up an obstacle or a thing uh yeah. and then yeah if you want to say anything about that uh, this is uh, the object of an eye is the other meaning oh. uh it's the thing you focus on 
the thing you focus on. The thing you focus on. So th this is talking about um, uh, 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 cognition. Yes. And we're not just talking about the physical eye, we're talking about the spiritual eye and cognition. And what uh, uh, the people of Iblis do in this Illuminati cult is they use scientific methods to alter the cognition, hmm. to alter the focus. Yes. Okay? Then they stamp it, they mark it. Okay. Uh, for example, that's what hip hop is all about. It's uh, it's all about changing the focus. Hmm. Okay. And it's no longer uh, the the focus is is no longer on the beauty of music, is it? No, right. There's it's no longer beautiful. yeah. That's right. There's nothing beautiful about yeah. hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. It's all uh, kind of uh, actually it's all kind of vulgar, in in a sense. There's nothing there's nothing redeeming about it other than the poetic license that is taken. So if you listen to the prose, you get rid of the music, you listen to the prose, there might be some saving grace in there in what the young men and women are trying to say because it's a, it's a, it's probably, it's an expression of uh, frustration in many cases, but it's not beautiful. The focus is not on beauty. This is not an attribution of Allah. Hmm. You see, it's an attribution of shaitan. You see, so the, this is how it's twisted. The focus here. Another one. Go on. What do you have? So we also have, and then some of these fit. Some of these may not be fitting as much. Um, uh, we have, for example, misfortune, evil, uh, affliction. So I, uh, and then if we go further, we will see even words like sacrifice here. Uh, all, of these are, are, all of these can be taken into the Gestalt picture of this marking. Um, I just looked at this one, conspicuously, conspicuously seen of the eye, so as not to be forgotten. Right. Okay. That's a very interesting phrase here, so as not to be forgotten. Not to all be forgotten. All of this in one Arabic word? Oh, my That's God. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Shaitan so, is talking here. Yeah, yeah. What is set up and worshipped? That's idolatry. What to the exclusion of, mm -hmm. or in preference to the true God? Yeah. So yeah. it also has that meaning. That's but idolatry. it has the meaning of worship in general when you look at it, uh, like the stones that are set up for worship. Yeah. Uh, has that meaning too? Before the Kaaba was built, the tradition uh, in the Judaic uh, literature uh, says that Abraham marked the spot right and then he circumambulated the spot in prayer and the, where the kaaba is now this is yes. before the kaaba was built or rebuilt okay so this area was marked as a place of worship reserved for allah subhana wa ta'ala as a focus for the ummah from the days of adam apparently okay we don't have all the details on that but we do know that this uh, place was marked, and it was marked by God. It was marked by uh, his prophets repeatedly, okay? And that mark over all these centuries, this two weeks that we've been on the earth, <laughs> mm. as I mentioned yesterday, 12,000 years of the Holocene that we're in, uh, all of this has been marked and remarked and reconfirmed by the men of and women of Allah okay and this the last one to confirm it was obviously the prophet okay and now shaitan is putting his mark <laughs> on the Kaaba yes he is yeah yes he is yes so he is. the Kaaba is now surrounded by his sigil and That's right. uh, that means that that place is open game uh, for uh, the shaitans to, who follow him. Now, whatever arrangement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made with the, his servants there and the angels who protect them, I don't know. We don't know. Hmm. Okay. They are there. But there's certain ground that has been given way so that shaitan 
so that he was, can mark this area with his sigil. Okay, you know that's what uh, that's what what I said when we first brought this subject up a few days ago. Hmm. He's like a dog marking this territory. This is what? like uh, how how shall I say spitting in the eye of God. That's okay. astaghfirullah. Yeah, and the <laughs> the interesting thing here is that. People who say that they are his servants are allowing him to do it. Yes. They're actually doing it for him. Okay. So um, th this is a very, very uh, pitiful state. It also has the meanings, meaning of sacrifice and, and yes. upon which victims were slain in sacrifice to another or others. Yeah. Yeah. To, to something other than the true God. When the sacrifice is made uh, to Allah, it is made in a sacred manner. And then the people who make the sacrifice, they share it with the Ummah, okay? After it is blessed. Yeah. Okay. And after it is dedicated uh, for the service and for the benefit of Allah's grace upon his people. But the people of Shaitan, they don't do this. They, their dedication is to Iblis. Yeah. Or to the or to the principalities who serve him in a certain place. So that's why you have the heathen pagan cultures. They had these roadside uh, shrines everywhere in the ancient days, and they still do. They sacrifice to these gods. They sacrifice to these demons, to these um, spirits, so that they can obtain their favor rather than the grace and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what takes place, and it takes place by virtue of the mark. The other one of the other meanings I see here that I think it, it, the lay, a laying of a snare, meaning a plot, a strategy, <laughs> yes. an yes. art, uh, artifice. All of these fall into the occult principles which I have discovered in my own research, and which I'm actually writing about in to some to greater or lesser degrees because this uh, this ensnarement the bible talks about this and it calls the idol and a, a snare mm -hmm. and especially okay. in reference okay, well, to to idols of the goddess okay statue of liberty uh, britannia europa <laughs> mm -hmm. columbiana the the columbia studios in hollywood uh, they're all holding the Olympian torch of Mithras. Mm. That's what it is. This is all idolatry. All of it. All of it. None of it can be apologized for in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is all idolatry. And a snare. Exactly what you find there. This is wonderful. This is a wonderful exercise. Um, one of the other meanings that... Uh may not fit or may fit uh, grief anxiety that causes fatigue tires uh and then let's continue because uh yeah. no no fatigue. no stop there a minute because that's what's taking place now okay. oh okay with this whole covid thing this shutting up of everyone inside this stopping of normal activity is creating stress and fatigue it's wearying and it's depressing the immune system and it's making people sick. This is another way to mark people. Okay. You can mark them with a, a rule like this, with a law. A fatiguing, laborious, troublesome life. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also has the meaning of a phase of the same kind, uh, meaning fatigue. Um, yeah. Stop. Uh, okay. okay. Stop. This is an example. An example. Remember, this morning we were talking about fruit. Okay. Yeah. Jesus said about his disciples. They said, "How are we going to know if we if we go out into the world? How are we going to know who are the people of God? Who the people of God are?" He said, "You will know them by their fruit." Hmm. And this goes back again to the tree of life. In Genesis, this tree of life produces good fruit. It doesn't produce good and bad fruit. It produces good, good fruit. fruit. 
Yes. Okay. That's all there is to it. So the only tree in existence at the time that is referred to in Genesis, that the only tree that produces both good and evil was Iblis. Hmm. Okay. It's not a literal tree. It's an, 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 an analogy. It represents the individual who first sinned. And by sinning and disobeying God, you come into a position where you produce good and bad fruit. That was not heard of before. It didn't happen. Okay. It happened after he sinned. And he brought the sin into the world. And then uh, Adam ate of his tree. What's that mean? It means taking the wrong advice. Hmm. <laughs> Following which the interesting, the next someone. meaning is the eye of the serpent. Now I know that that relates to the Bible a little bit more. <laughs> yes, yes. The well, eye of the <laughs> serpent called shuja, which means uh, to do something brave, brave or have bravery. Which he raises okay. his head to look, mm -hmm. and then it says uh, uh, to look at something or to see something. So uh, this has connotations that go go back to um, uh, uh, the uh, Herm, Hermes uh, Trigismus and uh, what we call the Caduceus and the Caduceus, the symbol of medicine with the two serpents going around it. That's a whole different discussion, and we don't need to uh, be so concerned about this in terms of the serpent himself. Mm. Uh, you know, don't think when you see uh, talk about the serpent, don't think in terms of a snake. Think in terms of what the snake represents. Right. Not, okay. the, not the serpent. I like snakes. They, they, you know, in my in my farm, uh, in in my my backyard, in, in my house in Thailand, my wife's house in Thailand, we have a good, nice sized garden with several fruit trees in it and whatnot. And they're cobras. OK. Mm. And the cobras leave me alone. I've seen them. And uh, when they see me, they just run back into their thorn bush or whatever place that they're. I like them because they eat the rats. Right. <laughs> OK. And I don't particularly like rats. So I'm happy to have them. And it was the same was the case with uh, my farm in Borneo. I had great big uh, uh, snakes, uh, green tree snakes and whatnot hanging around. And uh, some of the people visiting me were afraid of them. They, they come walk up the driveway, they could see one. I said, look, he's, he's, he's okay. He keeps the rat population down. The rats were eating my pineapples. So I talked to him and I said, thank you very much <laughs> for being a servant of Allah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's not, uh, let's not uh, uh, be too uh, down on the serpent here. But the serpent represents man's cunning in the uh, shadow. Oh, in the shadow yes. sense. Okay. Yeah. So this is the eye of the shadow. Uh -huh. the, the eye of the shadow who wants to hide his sin. Okay. Now he that reminds me of another verse which, uh, in which Allah says, He and his tribe see you from where you don't see them. Yes. Yes, they do. They do. And this scene has to do also with the pineal uh, <laughs> gland and its relationship to, um, how shall we say, uh, inspiration. Mm. Okay, the pineal gland. But this, we don't need to get all spooky about this because uh, that's not what's taking place. What's taking place with the pineal gland it's a regulation of the human physiology. Mm. And this regulation of human physiology has everything to do with hormones, has everything to do with uh, the sexual relationship, has everything to do with diurnal rhythms between night and day, and the physiological uh, 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 reproductions, <coughs> the physiological responses that we have to the environment. When they are, these are disturbed, when the pineal gland is disturbed and these diurnal rhythms are disturbed, we are out of sick, sick sink, and mm. we become sick. We become depressed. 
like the, the term also just re referred to, and we become stressed. And we can no longer be in a position of peace within ourselves, in other words, in, in order to make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Okay. When you're sick and you're suffering like that, that's awfully, awfully difficult to do. Now, I understand that uh, the Quran uh, mentions and Hadith mentions something about suffering being, uh, you know, a payback for sin. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, I'd rather suffer here than in hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But I'm talking about a constant state of imbalance. Right. It's, it's, it's not the normal fatigue, right? This is like not the normal fatigue. This a is the fatigue to make you go work. astray and desperate. Yes. Yes. And it's stressed. We're talking about stress. The kind of stress that does not, does not allow you to think properly. It does not allow you to balance the right brain with the left brain. And that is at the center of the uh, that is the core of the um, uh, the cult's uh, preoccupation obsession if you will with controlling the narrative hmm. because they want to control the narrative so that this balance is constantly upset and when the con this balance is constantly upset or when it's repressed you cannot walk the earth on fitra you cannot set your vision on fitra, on the things that honor Allah, on the things of the kingdom, because you're constantly stressed and you're preoccupied with darkness, the darkness that covers the wisdom of the deep, which is what we're trying to bring up here. Okay, The deep things of God were covered with darkness. Now we're breaking through that darkness through by virtue of this discourse here yeah. so that people can rest on fitra and then focus on what Allah Subhana wants them to do within the reach of their lives. Hmm. Okay. Not beyond that, but within what is under their right hand. Right. Right. You see, so that's what we're, that's what we're talking about here. So you see how all of this comes full circle. We had no yes. way, we had no, no intention of having this conversation today. And then you see how Allah works in synchronicity with your soul and mind and then, uh, and then with me. So that we can work together to pull this out so that it makes good sense for those who listen to us. Inshallah. And they can return to Fitra can return to Hidayah because yeah. the enemy of the Ummah, the enemy of all men, wants to repress, suppress Fitra hmm. and get your cognition fixed on hip hop, fixed on the goddess, fixed on, you know, all of these false, vain imaginations, which create strong delusion. And this delusion is very strong. You talk now to any CEO, you go sit down at the desk of any CEO, and you will see how deluded they are. Hmm. They will convince you that they're serving God <laughs> because yeah. they are convinced their mind is on the idol. How about uh, this other Asab. meaning? Unsub, yes. uh, a goat having erect horns. Ah, that's power. Okay. Hmm. We're talking about power, hmm. uh, the erect horn. The erect By the way, power. one of the meanings that we didn't go over, it, it all also means to be aroused, like sexually aroused. Yes, the word this, this is power. This is power. Okay, hmm. That's what the, uh, the, the obelisk represents. It represents power. Oh, the interesting. The goat represents power. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah, let me just actually go back and show you that, if I can find it quickly. Uh, uh, one of the other oh, meanings. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it starts from here. All of He's, this from one word. From one word, yeah. <laughs> wow, uh, I'm impressed. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I really get very impressed with the Arabic language for this very reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, um, let me show you, Dr. Omar. I did something like this when I wrote Trimzi. Trimzi. I went and I examined all the original words in Hebrew uh, and their various meanings. And it's oh, right. quite clear that the translators were very biased and picky <laughs> with, the, with the meanings that they chose. And uh, uh, many of the translations, many of the passages were taken out of context in order to fit the theology of the day. <laughs> so if you can you see can here, you can one probably, of the meanings yeah. is um, an erection of the penis. Yes. So it has mm-hmm. this meaning of, I guess, arousal or like you were saying, yeah. power. Uh, well, it means to rise high. It means to make high buildings. Uh, it means to raise your head, to erect, to erect buildings, to set up stones, to, uh, so if you look over here, to set up, to put up, upright, erected, stood up, upright, erect, become elevated, raised, reared, become even and erect, stood up, erect, raising his head, uh, like in one of the meetings it was talking about the servant raising its head, so kind of like, I, I, I think that kind of relates to power in All the world of that relates to power and there's nothing wrong with power uh, uh before going further hold on here because this is a very interesting point it's very significant because it has to do with dominion hmm. okay muslims have lost dominion because they have twisted this particular aspect of the faith so they are raising towers raising the penis and governing governing over a dominion, an area of dominion which is not theirs in divine order. Mm. Okay, how, how, how do I mean? Uh, if you if you disturb marriage, this has everything to do with what uh, Harut and Marut uh, were teaching. Right. You can you can separate husband from wife, uh, and that that doesn't mean uh, divorcing them. Okay, it means that to separate their complementarity. So uh, when you're raising this uh, this serpent, this uh, this uh, snake, this uh, phallus, this uh, stone, or whatever it, it might be, this tower, what is the purpose? The purpose of it is to serve as a signpost for the kingdom of Allah. Hmm. But if it's twisted. And it can become a, it can serve as a sign or as a place of dominion for the kingdom of Iblis. You right. see? And that's what's taking place here. When the mark is not the mark of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the mark of Iblis, all of this is transformed. Right. And all of it becomes a submissive. Uh, to uh, uh, wickedness, to to evil, to sin. Okay, and this is uh, Iblis's whole purpose. Iblis is not this. This is romantic idea that Iblis is interested in having the kingdom on earth. He's not interested in that. He knows he's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> he's he knows he's going to hell. So, but these there are princes and principalities, and there are men and women in the in the occult circles of esoteric, whatever it is you want to talk about, uh, whatever cult, they believe that in Iblis uh, wants a kingdom on earth, okay? And that his his purpose is to establish kingdom on earth and they want to serve him. No, his purpose is to take everybody to as many people to hell as possible. He's not interested in the kingdom on earth. And if he is interested in the kingdom on earth, it's only to subvert the servants of Allah. Yeah, those whom he can mark, those who have rejected the truth. Okay, are, are you with me? Am I making I'm, sense? I'm with here? you. Yes, absolutely. One of the other meanings, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, this may have something to do with it or not, is lineage, uh, ancestry. Yeah, well, yeah. This uh, has everything to do with it because they're very. You, you see, the Jews 
uh, are very uh, uh, touchy when it comes to lineage. And uh, for example, uh, those Jews, those Moranos who established the Jesuits, if you didn't have the right lineage, okay, if you didn't have the right Jewish lineage, you could not become a Jesuit in the first generation. That's so interesting the because first... the story of Iblis, Shaitan, mm -hmm. is mentioned in Quran seven times. And it just mm -hmm. so happens in the wisdom of Allah that every time those seven uh, those seven places where the Quran mentions Iblis, it is always followed by Banu is, is something about Banu Israel. <laughs> yes, yes. You want to go into that? <laughs> no, I was going to ask you to go into that. Uh, I'm just, okay. I'm just uh, reflecting on what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I did not know that. I don't know all of these things. Uh, I don't have that kind of knowledge of uh, the Quran. I have a general overall knowledge of the Quran, and uh, what I do know of it is that it came to complete. Uh, what came before, and I know Al Kitab mm, pretty well. Okay, uh, at least I used to. I, I don't spend much time with it now because I've moved on to some other areas. But this having and now that you mentioned the Jewish people, <laughs> yeah, it, it's very interesting that this word is specifically referred to ancestry in general, but specifically in terms of a woman, a woman. Uh, like the 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 ancestry of a woman specifically, uh -huh. and yeah. I know that the Jewish people, from what I understand, they look at ancestry in terms of the lineage from the female. Well, that also has to do not just with the woman, but with the human soul. Okay. Because the the woman represents the human soul in esoteric I language. See. Okay. Okay. So it's not just the physical woman. Uh, although she is important, without the chaste woman, without the chaste mother and wife, uh, men are lost, okay? And yes. the entire society is lost. But this reflects the element of the soul, which is considered, uh, which is referred to as uh, the Holy Spirit or the woman or the, the, the virgin in esoteric terms or uh, Sophia, Sophia, uh, wisdom. Wisdom yes. is also Sophia. an embodiment of the woman. Okay, so mm -hmm. this wisdom is a gift from Allah to to man. Okay, well, your wife is a gift from Allah to you. Okay, so mm -hmm. it, it it all it coincides and has different permutations, uh, and the. I'm working on this esoteric aspect of the uh, uh, Kabbalah uh, at present. I'm trying to explain it in terms that people can understand in my current essays because it's it's central mm -hmm. to what's taking place now because they have perverted it and they perverted this uh, uh, image of the woman, this image of uh, the creator to, into an androgyne, hmm. into a creature that they, they're saying, they teach in their esoteric uh, literature that Allah is both male and female. Well, this anthropomorphism is as simple as you can possibly get, yeah. okay? That's but right. they hold it true, okay? Hmm. And it's just another form of perverse idolatry and this perverse idolatry is now all over the world in terms of the gay lifestyle, hmm. in terms of homosexuality and lesbianism. They're trying to normalize what is abnormal, which brings us back again to our first The fitra. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Hello, so all of this fits together. You see how all of this fits together, but you have to have a gestalt uh, perspective, you see. I think that's the eye. other that's the other problem uh, I don't know if what's a lighter word than problem that's the other problem with the ulama they don't have a yeah. gasalt view right no, it's almost it's impossible to have a gasalt view unless you have unless you have both eyes dunya and 
the, you know, you know, the, the eyes in the world and yeah. on religion, you have to have both eyes to have an overview. Yeah. And you, there, yes, it's you, not possible to have an you overview. You have to have male, female. You have to have both eyes. Yes, you, you can. And you as, can. as long as your view is fragmented, right. as long as your view is fragmented, you, you can never find the enemy <laughs> because <laughs> you're not looking at the whole picture. <laughs> this, this is reductionism. Okay? Oh, is there you go. Philosophy. Yeah. Lots of people Reductionism, okay? That's, and uh, I, I've written about that in my book, A Hand of Idris, uh, to some degree. Um, it's, a, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. It, it causes this blindness, and this blindness allows Iblis to misguide. Uh, allows uh, the pineal gland to become unbalanced so that one's cognition is focused on the idol and not the kingdom of God. Mm. Okay? It's not the kingdom of God. So, um, uh, I, I've had, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to ramble now. Uh, I think we've uh, we, we've, we've done enough for, for now. We haven't yes. exhausted, but we we've done enough for, for now with this yes. particular Thank exploration so of this one word. This Look, one word. One word. God, one word. Oh my God. One yes. word. Okay. But if you you see, let me just say one more thing here. This one word to the religious. Ulama does not penetrate what we just penetrated. You see, he cannot penetrate it because he doesn't have knowledge of the esoteric enemy. Yeah, you see what I mean when I turn when 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 I uh, referred to the fact that uh, the ulama have not systematized their spiritual science. Hmm. They have not really organized in a systematic way their relationship to this one fortieth of the prophethood that we mm. have behind. The enemy has done that, not with the prophethood, but with the Iblis. Yeah. They have systematized this whole structure of wickedness, this whole structure of evil. It is systematically approached, and they have invested it. They have incorporated it globally now. Okay, the ulama has failed to do this as a counterbalance. Mm. So they have no defense now against this system, and which is why Allah has to come in and intervene by means of the return of Isa or the Mahdi, uh, whatever is going to take place now. That doesn't mean that there's not intervention on an individual basis or on a microcosmic basis. There is. The angels intervene whenever they are given permission, okay? This is a divine order. But if you're marked, there's no angelic help for you, okay? There's no angelic help. If you're marked, you're like the woman in that painting of Picasso. You fall um, victim. I mean, even in the Muslim world, there are Muslim actors, actresses, making that pose with the one eye, you know? And... Uh, and and, yeah. and 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 wearing they're, they're, earrings they're and marked. necklaces, and it, mm -hmm. I don't think it even occurs to them as a second thought that wait, what's going on here? The hand of Fatima. <laughs> yeah. The hand of Fatima. <laughs> okay. All of this is there. All of these marks are there. These people are marked, and when they're marked, they fall victim to the um, the default uh, order of um, spiritual law. I've written a little bit on spiritual law. Nobody in the ulama talks about these things. These are things that automatically happen when you do not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some of the uh, earlier Muslim groups, they like to talk about this in terms of fate or destiny or uh, a lack of free will. But no, we have a free will. And if we exercise that free will and we choose to disobey, there are certain things that happen on a default basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we obey, there are blessings. If we disobey, there's a curse. There's either blessings or curse. In the middle of some place, there are accidents. Okay. So a volcano goes off and you have an accident. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the consequences of a choice, the consequences of a deed.
that is made in contravention of divine order. Mm. Okay. And these are marked. It's like the woman who gets into the car with her kids with a drunk husband. Okay. When he crashes, they all suffer. Yes. Okay. So that's what, what's happening to the Ummah. That's what's when the ulama you. crash, the whole body is, is, is suffering. That's why you see pictures of the Iraqi women out in the street. Where is the God of Muhammad? They mm. want to know. Mm. Where is he? Well, he doesn't respond to people who are marked. Mm. I think the scripture makes that very clear. Mm. Allah will not respond. You can pray all you want. He will not respond. So when you're marked, you are setting an iron dome <laughs> over your people and over yourself. And I hope the people who listen to us here get this very clear because that's what's taking place. SubhanAllah. Okay, inshallah, Dr. Umar, I bothered you again for a whole hour almost again. Uh, <laughs> So okay. please forgive me and uh, everybody that's watching this, please do du'a for us and uh, please do share um, with your friends and family members uh, because these are serious matters. And, uh, you know, inshallah, I leave all of you uh, at this point. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.